Okay, so our next project is going to be a um, artwork that pays homage to the artist Klimt. Now, he was an artist. This is examples of his artwork. This one's called The Kiss. Um, and he liked to do art that had portraits or people in them. A lot of times the portraits were done in like realistic colors. And then he used a lot of pattern and a lot of like neutrals and golds and they were very detailed pictures. So we're going to pay homage to him, but we're going to do something similar to our um, explosion design. So here is an example of the project. It's going to be a project that has the hand is going to be the subject. Your hand is going to have watercolor as the media. And then you're going to incorporate some black and white Sharpie for, for contrast. You're going to start by drawing three hand studies using line contour. When you're done with those studies, you're going to take your favorite one, your best one, and you're going to trace it so you'll have your study then you'll trace it using the light box onto the watercolor paper because watercolor paper is a heavier weight paper it's more like a paper towel and it uses it to soak up the water so you'll you know take your study put it on the light box put the paper underneath it and then trace around your hand so then you'll basically have a piece of paper that has your hand on there the next step is you're going to, if you need to, I'm gonna use a Sharpie, if you need to make your hand go further off the page, you can do that because it needs to be like it's coming from the page. Then your ribbon, the ribbon is going to be a um, something that gives you some eye travel. So you need to continue your ribbon. So you're gonna just, you know, somehow have it go off the page you know, maybe, and I'm doing a Sharpie, so I'd probably erase that line there so it looks like it overlapped. And see, it kind of threads through here. I can maybe have it go up and around. But somehow work your ribbon from your hand around on your page. Once you have your ribbon done, then you have to do your separation so you have your different patterns. You're going to separate, section off your background. Pretend like this isn't here, so it's going to be all your background without worrying about what's going on on top into seven different sections. So I'm just going to break mine up, and it doesn't matter how you do it. So right now I have one, two, three, four. I still have four because this is just, you know, one, two, three, four. I'll make a little small one here. If you saw the other half, it connect up here. So one, two, three, four, five. Maybe section this one out. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be the other half of that. So I need one more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um... Let's, let's make this one a smaller one here. And this will be the other half of it. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven different sections in the background. It's like the hands on top of it. Then, next, in each section, you're gonna draw a different pattern. So, similar to his pictures, see how there's all sorts of, you know, there's a pattern here, pattern here, pattern here, different pattern here, you're going to break up your sections. Here's a pattern here, here's a pattern here, here's another one here. So in each section you're going to have a different pattern. Once you've drawn all your patterns, you're going to take this little see-through thing and you're going to mark your area and you want to do it somewhere 
around your hand because your hand again is your center of interest so it should be like the base where you want your eyes to go first and again this is kind of making it another another reason to look there first you're going to mark that section that's going to be black and white now this is kind of clear so you can see what's going to be behind it so on mine it's basically this section right here I could move it around maybe I want to do it like this but then you can see where you want to do it then you're going to trace around that oops kind of hard to do without like a pencil I would definitely do it with a pencil not a sharpie then everything within this is going to be either black or white so you need to look in, inside and see okay this pattern here how can I make it black or white how can I convert this to black or white and you don't want to have patterns that are side by side that are the same so since I did this pattern here black I wouldn't want to do the background of this one black because then they would both blend together and you wouldn't see that separation of the pattern so you need to decide how am I going to change this to where this pattern stands out how can I make this pattern look differently so this pattern stands out so you're gonna to have to think about your patterns and how this one can be different when you only have black and white to work with so once you've colored that in we're going to use some watercolor to do the background and I'll have like a little demo on how watercolor works when we get to that section but I also have and I don't know if you can really see it this well, but the watercolor in these is a metallic watercolor, similar to the watercolor we used when we did our Egyptian um, portraits in sixth grade. So it has a shimmer, very, oh, you can kind of see it there. So it has that shimmer on it, very similar to like the gold that Klimt used in his painting. So we're, again, we're using kind of not the same process, but it has the same look that Klimt to use. So the steps you'll do again is you'll do your studies, you'll pick your hand, you'll trace your hand on the watercolor paper, you'll extend your ribbon and your wrist, you'll separate the background into seven sections, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll draw in all your patterns in each one of those sections. Then you'll trace over your square, your little rectangle, so that you can know where your black and white is going to be. And then you'll finish it up with Sharpie and paint.